All right. I didn't think it was necessary for you to watch me come up with a solution for the uh, kitchen. But basically my thinking was, I can't have an entrance off of the kitchen from the pantry because it messes up this. So I'll have the entry to the pantry off of the butler's pantry, which isn't perfect, but it'll, it will allow my kitchen to be nicer. And I pop this back a little farther. So I have an outside wall here and here now, which was easy enough to do. So we'll come from the kitchen through the butler's pantry to the dining room, or we'll come through the kitchen from the kitchen through the butler's pantry right into the butler's pantry. So that worked. So the next thing, now that everything is sort of looking good, is to start putting in some doors. So we go over to the architecture tab. We go over to the door tab. I'd like my doors to be three foot wide by seven foot tall. So I've selected that three foot wide by 84 inches. And now I can start putting in my doors. And if it doesn't go in the right way, you have this little click right here. Okay, so that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Uh, I want a double doors here, single door here. Um, I'm still debating on whether I want to have another door back here. There won't be any doors set for into the pantry. And the rest of these will be openings. So let's see. We'll go up to our uh, insert tab and we'll go over to load families and we'll go over to our imperial library and we're looking for openings and there's an opening right there. Yep. And passage opening cased, which means that there's casing around it already. Uh, let's try that and see what happens if we get an error message or not. Yeah, so um, we have to go. The solution to that, and I'm not sure exactly what that is, architecture component, insert, load a family, and now we'll take our cased opening and see what happens if it'll let us do it. Yes, it will. So I'm not sure what the the concept is there. But again, 36 by 84, opening, opening, opening. I do want an opening here too. And I can come back and make these openings larger. Um, let's see, now the question is, how are we going to uh, open up this? So let's put it here, okay? So now, uh what have i got let's measure this guy just to see what the distance is here because i don't remember 18 feet so i could make this a 16 foot opening so i come over here edit the type duplicate it i'm going to say instead of 36 i'm going to say 16 feet 16 feet and i don't need the two there so it'll be 16 feet by 84 Okay, that's the new one. And the width of it now, I'll change it from here, I'll change it to 16 feet and say, okay. Now that opening is 16 feet. Looks good to me. I really do want it to be centered and I don't know if it is or it isn't. So I'll measure to the center line and then to this wall. It's not, so I'll say equal, hit escape, 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 click on that guy, delete it, hit enter to say okay for the unconstraint. All right, that looks good. Now, maybe we could have another entrance here, but that looks pretty good coming in off of the family room. So now I'm looking for double doors. So architecture, door, insert, load a family. Let's see if we have some, we'll go up one. Let's see what we have in the doors. Uh, let's look in the residential first of all. I'm looking for a double door. That looks, uh, that's a sliding door, so I don't want that. That is a pocket door, so I don't want that. And these doors have uh, glass in them, so I really, I don't want them. And nothing in that folder. All right, 
So we'll go with that for now. And 36, 72 by 84 is what I'm looking for. So I'll select that. Six by, that might be a little bit too big for the opening that I have there. But I, I'm okay, I'm gonna do that. Because this closet doesn't need to be that deep, so I'll get some more space there. So, and I'll change this guy simply to two feet on the inside. And then I'll have room for my uh, double doors into the library. And do, 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 what do we have here? Okay, so we, I'm not sure what that room is going to be. Is it going to be a bar off of the uh, family room? Uh, is it going to be a broom closet? be a broom closet uh, and I want double doors here too I certainly don't want these guys with the glass in them but for now I'm going to stick with that so architecture doors and we'll go back over and load a family and then we're going to take these double doors and we'll say um how wide is that let's say it's about six feet wide so I'll take uh five feet by 84 if they have a 60 by 84 yep okay let's see what happens if i try to put that in no nope, five feet is too much so back to the loda family and we'll pick these for now i'll switch them later uh so i need something smaller than 60 inches looks like that's the smallest they have okay so cancel out of that edit the type duplicate it and I'll make it four feet, 48 inches, get rid of the two, and then change the width to four feet and say, okay. And now I have my four foot doors. Okay, All right, that looks pretty good. So because I knew that I needed to have uh, certain widths uh, of my rooms and my hallways and stuff and this guy can go up I'll come, I'll come back and really organize and I'm not going to really worry about the actual center lines of the doors right now only because it's possible that something's going to change which means that that's going to change so I'll come back and fix that uh, later and then I have my last opening which is right here I know I have three feet from here to the center line, so it's got to be less than three feet. Let's use this guy, create similar, and put him right here. I'm going to make sure he's on the center line of that line there. So I'll use the align tool. This was my midpoint, okay? And what's the width here? 36. I've got three feet and three feet. So if I went five feet, we have a five foot opening which would be 60 inches, I don't see one. So what do we do again? Edit the type, duplicate it. We'll make it uh, 60 inches by 84. We'll get rid of the two and say, okay. And then the width of this one is going to be five feet. And I'll say, okay. Now the width of my opening is five feet. So I, my original concept was that the center line of the stairs and the center line of the opening into the family room lined up so I can get rid of my guideline now. And it looks like I need another door over here. Create similar. And whoops, now that's trying to edit the family, which I don't want to do. So we'll just click on it again. Create similar and then come over here. Uh, I don't like doors swinging on top of other doors but it looks like we don't have an option here so now i'm into the i'm into the so into the garage i can come into the house i can go over to the outer room go straight into the laundry room over into the back hall closet oh if i've got groceries i can bring them down into the kitchen if i'm just coming in and i want to go upstairs boom i can take the stairs up there these are fancy stairs which are pretty much just for looks because they don't really uh, serve a purpose. So it's an expensive element, but it's a nice, it's a nice detail. So let's take a look at that in 3D. Yeah, now I started to get some uh, doors in there. Seems to be working fine. 
And you can see it's pretty simple to uh, work with Revit once you know how to do uh, the different uh, commands. And that's kind of what you're, you're taking the class for is to learn those commands. So I like what I'm seeing so far. I still don't know what I'm going to do with that. Uh, uh, I can actually make an elevator. I don't have an elevator in the house, which would be another way to get up and down. I could probably make that an elevator. Might be the right size. And the kitchen, you know, I don't know if this countertop's going to go all the way across here, um, all the way to the end. But I'm just laying it out for now. Once I lay out my kitchen, I'll have a better idea what's what's going on there. Maybe I should, let's see, just a thought. What if I align, yeah, that makes more sense. <clears throat> then I can bring this guy down a little farther. Still gonna have to uh, clean up that wall there. I like this a little bit better. You know, so the, the edge of the countertop lines up with that wall there, that makes more sense to me. So gradually what's happening here is we're fine tuning our, our uh, floor plan on the first floor so that uh, we started with the bubble diagram, which is just relationships of the rooms. And we started putting in hard lines for the spaces of those rooms, not being concerned about the actual uh, final dimensions of it, but just try to work it out. And then we saw that there were some issues and some concepts that had to be refined and we refined those. And then uh, when we looked at what the resulting was, uh, for this case, it was a horrible kitchen. So I had to re-modify, I had to modify my thoughts about the pantry and the butler's pantry. I would say the, the pantry location is not as desirable as it was before, but the kitchen is much more desirable. And I think that the, if you're gonna prioritize, you will all prioritize for the kitchen as opposed to the uh, ease of access to the pantry. So I'm looking around, I don't really see anything that's an issue. So I wanna get rid of my dimensions now because uh, they're just in the way. I could turn them off, but I have all these little dimensions in here, which I'm just using as reference. So I'm gonna right click on this. I'm going to say, select all instances, visible in view. So now it's selected all of the dimensions and I'll just delete them. And I'll come back and put them in, put them in later because you saw how easy it was to do that. So um, I'm quite happy with the first floor uh, right now. The way it is, the ideas work out, the concepts work worked out. I had to do a little shifting here and there, but it turned out to be pretty good. Let's get rid of this guy. Okay, save it and spend a moment just looking at it to see if there's anything that I that I'm not happy with here. I like the family room, I like the kitchen, I like the breakfast nook, I like the butler's pantry, I like the dining room, I like the great room, I like the stairs, uh, laundry room, I like a big laundry room. So that's nice. Uh, the office, yeah, the office might be a little, the office might be a little bit small, but you know what? It's still, and it's kind of secluded and private. So the question is, would, would we put another door here? Would we want another door here? And I don't, I don't really know the answer to that. Does this door have the ability to swing all the way back? So we're looking at this guy right here. We need to have at least three feet. And wow, that's close. Um, what I want would want is for this door to be able to pivot all the way open and not hit this wall. And it's pretty darn close. It's a quarter of an inch. No, wait, this is not, these aren't six foot doors. They're five foot, right? So I think we're okay. This door is, no, it's three feet. So I, I might have to worry. I might have to work on that. Let's again, fine tuning and, and detailing. But I don't want it to to open up and and it hinges right here. It's going to pivot around. So if I let's do this real quick. If I drew a line here, circle, and I put the circle here and here, see how close it is when it when it when it actually pivots all the way open. Look how close it is to that. If there's any kind of a striker or a, an astragal or any kind of uh, hardware that extends from the end of the door in terms of a lock 
anything like that, then it will probably hit the wall. So I should probably move it down. But uh, for now, I'll just keep that in the back of my mind and say, all right, well, so here we are. The first floor looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to do any more to that until I work on the second floor because although my sketch on the second floor looks like it's probably going to be okay, it doesn't um, uh, actually, it, it, it's an unknown, you know, it's, it's a belief. I have a belief that it's going to work, but I don't know if it will. And I don't want to do any more work on the first floor than I already have because it's possible that the second floor is going to change. And then when I bop, pop this guy out, now there's more space here, right there, uh, uh, upstairs, if I carry that all the way up to the second floor, which I probably would. So you can see that uh, it's really not that complicated uh, to, to create a, 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 for, a floor plan. It's a pretty good model. Uh, it's a good start. And so in a couple of days, we sh should be, you know, the first day we'll spend basically working on uh, stack loss. And the uh, second day, uh, uh, between the first day and the second day of class, I would expect you to start laying out your floor plan. Uh, and then in the second day of class, we'll take a look at everyone's floor plan and, and see what we can do to help it uh, improve or see what kind of issues there are. And uh, another thing I want to point out, which I will point out in class as well, is that uh, I'm definitely available for everyone in this class for private uh, Zoom meetings during the week. So if you're working away and you want to, to take a uh, want a little bit of assistance with just you and I working together on your project, I'm happy to do that. And another thing I'd like to point out to you is that you have the ability at the end of every class period to submit on Blackboard your, your work in progress so we can see exactly where it is because we have a, a rubric and I'll uh, look over your project and I'll tell you what parts of the rubric you've accomplished and which parts of the rubric um, aren't uh, which uh, you aren't receiving you aren't receiving full credit for and so you have an opportunity to uh, fine-tune it and make it better uh, so there's no grading during the uh, 14 weeks of the class it's just uh, grading on uh, last day when you submit it but I'm happy to take a look at it and say, hey, you're a little deficient here, or you're a little weak here, or you still haven't done this, that, or the other thing. And if you do a submission every week, you're not required to, but if you do a submission every week, then you have the benefit of the person who's going to be grading your final project, which is me, looking over your preliminary work to tell you where you need to focus a little bit more attention on it. So I think that's a, a good feature for that. So you simply, uh, PDF your work, upload it to the folder, which I'll be making on Blackboard. And then I'll go through each and every one of those and I'll do what we call redline. And I'll just put some redline marks on it and some comments on it and things that you need to do. And then uh, I will uh, upload it back up to a different folder where your uh, marked up drawings for that week would go. And you can take a look at it. And then if you wanna do a private Zoom meeting, we'll go over it or if it's self-explanatory then you can just uh, fix it and uh, keep working and then submit your next progress uh, sheets during the, the next week.